that's the sort of thing that worries me sometimes. You get a couple like that. He faked to push her. And she shouted. You know, he thinks he's being funny, but with all the potholes there, he could just shove and she could go. Here at Beachy Head, 38 official went over last year. Now, if there was a road junction with 38 deaths, they'd spend a fortune re rebuilding it. People ask me, what is your technique? I don't have a technique. I just see people and then I go and talk to them and judge it on the instant as to how I deal with it. Right, my day will always start here. First thing I do is to uh, check if there's anyone gone over. A couple of people that I've talked down, uh, one of them has actually kept in contact with me. And he's fine now. It was just a moment of madness. He was that depressed at that moment in time. And in a split second, you're gone, and there's no going back. Within a few days, he pulled himself around and said that in that, mo that moment of madness, he could have died. But he's alive today to, today to tell the tale. So this is why it's so important that we do do so something about it because you can save people and they can get over it. I think out of the 12, I know of five that are fine today. The others, you just hope they are because you never hear from them again. Uh, but that's, that's their prerogative. But I, you can only hope that you've given them a second chance at least. That's what I think. You've given, everyone deserves a second chance in life. When you talk to these people, you have an empathy with them. Because the moment you say, I've sat where you sat, I've sat on that edge, I've been taken away from here by the police because of my depression, because of what happened to Maggie. Um, so I know how you feel. Plus, I say, I lost my wife here. Come lunchtime, she phoned me. And I said, you OK? And she said, I'm fine. I said, do you want me to come home? She said, no, I'll be OK. She said, um, Put the jacket potatoes on for about quarter to six. I've been at quarter to six. And um, that, she said, I love you, darling. I said, I love you. And that was the last word she ever spoke to me. Uh, the worst part is then possibly the next day, because you have to then go and identify the body. And that, that's when you know for sure, you know, because they have to hear you say, yes, that is my wife. Um, I was cleaning my shops and I thought, I've got to come to terms with this. I've, I've got to face my demons. So I, I went up there about up as five quarter to six again in the morning when I spotted a, a woman up there uh, sitting on a bench writing a note. And when I approached, I realised she was writing a suicide note. Um, I started to cry. She said, why are you crying? I said, well, my wife died here last week. So she said, well, then you shouldn't understand. I've got the right to do this. And she started to walk away and I was trying to talk her out of it. Then all of a sudden she made a run for it and made her run for the edge. So I just ran after her, rugby tackled her, brought her down, and hung on to her till the police came and got her. Well, since that day, I've been going up to Beachy Head uh, twice a day, an hour in the morning, hour in the afternoon, seven days a week, trying to stop people from going over. And when I leave here, I will look at the cars coming towards me, at people faces just to see if I can see a distressed face. It's crazy. What I do, I'm going just just in case I'm missing one. It, it's got better. It's almost been therapeutic to me. And it's become a lot easier since I met Val. 
Um, by having someone that supports you and loves you, makes it life a lot easier. You can come back and share it, and you don't have that that quiet anguish that you can wrestle with for the rest of the day. It's it's gone and forgotten, and you just get on with your life, and then go and do the job you have to do. I think it takes someone really special to be able to communicate with someone, and he always seems to sense that someone's in trouble. He has an intuition for it, and he's very good with words. He always says the right thing. He did with me. <laughs> Maybe it's because it brings back a lot of memories, but I have found that it's been therapeutic as well. All right, I have to keep coming up to the place that my wife has died, but over a period of time, it's meant that I've been able, to, been able to come to terms with it because I keep coming back. If you face your problems in life, you can beat them. It's only when you don't face them, it's only when you, you, you sweep it under the carpet and say, oh, I don't want to know, is that it starts to manifest itself. But if you face your problem, you can deal with it.